I'm Ben from Dad to Dad, a podcast where me and my best friend Ryan talk together as dads. We're also Christians. I'm a ministry student. He's a pastor. And today's episode, we are going to be talking about grace, how we give it to our children and why it's important. So I hope you're ready for it. Let's go ahead and let's get into this conversation. What's up, everybody? It is Ben and Ryan, our dad to dad. Today, we are going to talk about a topic that I definitely need to work on a little bit more, and that is grace. I think we all uh, have to work on that a little bit. You know, like, if we all were very good at it, then we, um, yeah, I don't I don't know what I want to say here, because Jesus was full of grace, Yeah, and uh, sometimes we lack in that. Um, but it's how do we do it better? How do we do grace like Jesus did though? Is my, my biggest thing. Bro, I feel like my 40 days of being tried is every day I wake up and I have a toddler smacking me in the face. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to dig somewhere to find grace and I'll be honest, I don't succeed every single day. So yeah. I want to dive into that and how we can succeed and why we should succeed. And does it even matter if as a dad, we show grace to our children? You know, there's, there's a difference between showing grace versus discipline. Children need to be disciplined. Yeah. It also says that in the Bible, but it's also, where do you put grace at? And then how do you, how was that discipline happening, moving forward? Um, and I have mm. a story that, that I can share just happened today. Okay. Uh, with with my three year old, and it was just it, it was amazing, and I knew we were getting ready to do this, and I was like, well, let's try this, and so I'll just clearly just start with the story here, and so what ended up happening is, um, he was uh hitting his brother, and I made him go to the corner, so he stood in the corner for a little bit. This is my youngest, my three year old. Well, then he had this cord, and I said, hey, you need to give me that cord, and then he starts swinging it around. I said, you need to give me that, and he just mm -hmm. kept swinging around, swinging around. I said, listen, give me that cord. If you don't, you have two choices. You're either go to bed or you're going to go back to the corner. He's like, I don't want to do either one of those. I said, well, that's, that's not the way it works, and he didn't, and so I put him to bed early, uh, usually you know, around 8 o'clock, put him in bed about seven ten. But the difference was, is that he's, he, he was apologizing. Daddy, I'm sorry. Daddy, I'm sorry. Daddy, I love you. I said, Hey buddy, I love you too. Despite what happened. I love you. He asked me, Hey daddy, can you lay down with me? Yeah. And it's, at first it's... it, it would have been easy to say, Nope, you're going to bed. But you know what? I said, yeah, sure. You're going to bed early. That's your punishment, but I have no problem. I just, I mean, I laid next to him and, you know, we just, we talked for a little bit. And I think that's the same kind of thing of, yes, there's a discipline coming through, but he needs to know that despite what happened, despite him maybe making me frustrated or mad, that I still love him, that I still want to spend time with him, mm -hmm. and that I coached him through those kind of things. And see, I, I think... I've had, I had the incident actually happen yesterday. And at the end of the <laughs> night, as we're putting everybody to bed, Chase looks at me and he goes, daddy, you're my best friend. Mm. And I'm like, bro, we just went through a whole <laughs> WWE match with each other screaming and he's sitting there and, and he, and like, as I'm saying it out loud now, he extended grace to me first. Mm. I didn't give it to him first. Cause what he got for me was a lashing. Because he had told his mom no, he wouldn't get dressed, he undid his bed, he started throwing stuff in his room. Uh, we have a three-year-old uh, temper tantrum drama king to the max here. And then I have a daughter who got caught in a lie. She did lie to us uh, last week. We knew she lied. And so I just looked at her and said, honey, I know you lied. And bro, she lost it. She lost it, like went to a room, I lied to you, know? and, and it was a whole different thing. And for her, I always have to extend grace to her first. With my son, I struggle a little bit more. And um, I, I think it's important, though, that we do show grace, like you were saying, because it shows us how we interact with one another in the long run. It shows how we can yeah. forgive somebody. It shows how we can set boundaries. It shows how we can 
become better people. We're not defined by the moment that was in the past. We're going to be defined by who we become in the future. Yeah. I mean, grace it, isn't it, just, just imagine for a second, if you never gave grace, I don't know about you. I know as a parent, as a dad, I'm telling you, sometimes the easiest thing to do is like, we give that discipline out and then we, all right, you know, forget it. Mm. That's also not a bad thing to do sometimes. Some, I mean, sometimes we have to stick to our punishments because then our kids don't learn from things. But, man, there is mm -hmm. nothing wrong with, like, hey, you know what? You did this wrong. But even despite those things that you did wrong, I love you. I care for you. Let's move forward. And let's start new. Um, man, my oldest the other day, he said, hey, can I just – can we just – can we just start new today? I'm like – Hey. Where's that coming from? Like reset. When when, when, when an eight year old says, "Hey, you know what? Can can we just start new?" I'm like, mm -hmm. "Yes, let's do that." I mean, and so when you're in when you're in those moments and you have an eight year old telling you, "Hey, I want to start over," man, you know what? That's exactly what we do with Jesus, though. Hey, Jesus, can can I do? Can we start this over? Like, I'm sorry about this. Can I start mm -hmm. this over? You know what Jesus does? He's like, absolutely. He's, he's always there, but no, same exact thing as we're parents and our heavenly father sometimes is giving grace to us. We also have to pour that onto our kids as well. Absolutely. And what you just described is repentance, forgiveness, yeah. and the whole shebang. But why <laughs> is it important as a dad to show grace? And here's why I believe it's important for us as dads to show grace. One, we're called to be the head of the household. Mm -hmm. Two, Fun statistic, I don't know if you know this, but most kids' interaction with Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, comes from their earthly father. How mm. they interpret he is going to act towards them is how we are reflected first. Because their first instance with a father is their earthly father. Yeah. So if you're not showing their adaptation as a young kid maybe even into a young adult and hopefully not but into an adult they may think that jesus is somebody who doesn't forget because you were a father who did not and because we use words especially in the english language that say our father mm -hmm. who art in heaven you know or we pray every time like dear father dear lord and we set that action well we are the first line of that action here that they'll ever see. They say dad before they say God, believe it or not. Yeah. And so you have a responsibility, I believe, as the head of the house in raising these kids to be followers of Jesus, to be the example that Jesus called you to be, which is be like him. That's right. And and, and as a dad, and as, as us being the head of the household, the primary spiritual person in your kid's life is not your past that you go to church to, not your kid's pastor. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be you. It's supposed to be us. Yeah. We, as a kid's pastor myself, I want to help, and I want to help supplement, but I want to give parents resources. I want to give dad resources. And mm -hmm. so that way the dad and the mom, but the dad can be the leader of that he needs to be for his children because we want to turn that away just from, Oh yeah, well my kid's pastor is their spiritual leader. No, we want to make that where the parents are the spiritual leaders. And this is how we do it by showing grace, by acting like Christ and different things like that. And that's where we're at right now. And you know what? I, I think the best thing that we could do is we'll put some of those resources down below. I know up there and Avon, you've got some things for your church to do. I know mm -hmm. there's some things here in the Richland County area that we could get you connected to. Also, you can hit Ryan and I up, Ryan at RKWorkman85 on Instagram, and me, Absolutely. Ben underscore Atkins, L-Y-L, or just Ben underscore whatever. Go to Ryan's and find me. <laughs> <laughs> Go to him first. He's the pastor. I'm just the student. Of course. Of but, course. But, I knew you were going to bring out with the pastor stuff, but, though. Hey, um, listen. You're not alone as a dad in any of this. It may feel like you're isolated sometimes, but give yourself grace too. That's right. Give yourself grace too. You need it. You need it. All right. That's going to do it for Ryan and I here on Dad to Dad.
do us a big favor hit the like button hit the subscribe button share it with all your friends that's right we'll see you later peace out guys bye